If I say, surely darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us pray together the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great, great deeds are they that you have done. done. Surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us now join together in praying Psalm 123, responsively by whole verse. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning. beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more, bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join together in the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to, to go, go in, in peace, peace as you have, have promised. promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen just offer some reflections on the readings we've heard tonight. And I'll begin with the song of praise that uh, led into uh, the opening of our prayers tonight. It comes from the book of Revelation. It's called the Song of the Redeemed. And we know that Revelation deals substantially with questions about worship. And that does seem to be the theme from these lessons that I have selected for us tonight. The the redeemed are recognizing in God um, that God is worthy of praise because of God's righteous ways and God's uh, persevering truth. The, the rhetorical question asked by John is, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name because of the deeds that God has done, the redeeming uh, revaluing, uh, saving deeds of God. As a result, writes John, all nations will draw near and fall down before the Lord because the Lord's just and holy works will have been revealed for all to see. And so we now turn to that reading from Isaiah, which I selected for tonight's prayers because uh, like in a number of places uh, in the Old Testament prophecies, God has just had it up to here 
with empty worship, with empty words and empty gestures, even with maybe magnificent deeds of bribery to say, if I give this great sacrifice, will that take care of business? And, and, and so, so the prophet is trying to help us see from God's perspective that God does not want some detached worship. God wants worship that shapes and forms the living of our days, the way we interact in our own righteous deeds in, in relationship with others. To bring offerings alone is futile. That is called bribery. Um, the Lord says, I am weary of those things. I am weary of your festivals. I am weary of your assemblies. And instead, God asks this, remove the evil doings, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice for all people, rescue the oppressed among you, defend the orphan, plead for the widow, in other words, when, when those words show up in Old Testament prophecy, it is identifying the most vulnerable people within the larger community, which were always the alien, the widows, and the orphans, and the poor. To seek to do service and acts of righteousness in relationship with the most vulnerable is how we worship. And all of that is shaped in the words and deeds that we pray in the solemn assemblies, in the gatherings, in evening prayer, in Holy Communion. The encouraging message of hope at the end of this passage of prophecy from Isaiah is that it's never too late. God says quite bluntly, let's argue this thing out. <laughs> Though your sins are as red as scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are like crimson, they will be turned to wool. If you are obedient, if you will turn from the old ways to the new ways, you shall receive the goodness of the land. And so I've selected from the New Testament another portion of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew's Gospel, where again Jesus is talking about how to worship. And the instructions are simple and, and yet challenging, especially for preachers, because he makes mention to those who use too many words. But the message is simple and challenging. Worship is not about a show for other people. Worship is about pure honesty in relationship with God and intended to be um, a, a mutual experience that at the same time shapes and forms us to be more ardent followers of Jesus Christ in our six day a week lives, not just in our words and offerings, our worship lives. And so Jesus gives these instructions about modesty, about humility, about praying and giving in secret. And he goes on from here incidentally to to teach his disciples how to pray in the, according to the Lord's Prayer, right? And, um, and of course, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer later in this evening prayer. It's always a part of every common liturgy um, in, in our worship, whether it's communion or, or daily morning prayer or evening prayer. And part of the reason it is because our Lord taught us to pray that way. The second thing I want you to notice later tonight when we pray the Lord's Prayer is how much it is associated with our everyday lives. About giving us each day our daily bread. About forgiving us as we daily forgive others for their trespasses and debts. And for delivering us from the time of trial. So, in all these things, I think the message that I want to hold up for us tonight is that our worship life is not divorced from the rest of our life. It, it is intended to be integrated with the rest of our life. Integrated in a way that causes us to understand first and then be inspired 
to live in the imitation of Christ, in the imitation of God. That takes us back to that very first song of the redeemed. That is why we worship in the first place, because the goodness and righteousness of God's actions and deeds for those in need of mercy is what elicits and draws forth the most sincere prayer of adoration altogether. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Creator of of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. For our nations, we pray. For our nation, we pray. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our cities we pray. Heavenly Father, in your world, you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. Behold and visit, we pray, the cities of our nation. Renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Send us honest and able leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression, that peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order, and that men and women from different cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the oppressed, we pray. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbors. 
Strengthen those who spend their lives establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunities for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For peace we pray. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. We invite your prayers of thanksgiving and intercession at this time. We pray for healing for Susie, Rosemary, Caden, Joy, Kirsten, Don, Catherine, Ruthie, Sandy, Denise, Nancy, Dave, Anne, Jeannie, Carol, Dick, Carol, Nancy, and Kay. We give thanks for the safe birth and delivery of Cole Elijah Ruggles, son of Hal and Sarah Ruggles. And we pray for the repose of the souls of Teresa Colabello, aunt of Elena Lombardi, and for Jeanette Deal, friend of Sandy McKenna. Let us sum up our prayers with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you, you have, have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.